Hello, are you the owner of a job shop or are you the production planner of a high mix low volume machine shop and you are looking for an appropriate tool to get rid of your own Excel solutions? Then you guys are the right person to watch this video. Today I would like to show to you um, the first step of professional job shop scheduling and this is defining the resources and defining your order backlog. So that means that we have like a total blank planning board so a total blank scheduling solution in here and now let's see what you need to define first to fill this out to get your job scheduled to get your resources defined okay and the first thing is the good message for initial setup you can actually use Excel to define this so what you need to do is first list all the resources that you want to schedule for your shop here in that column A and as my colors here imply you need to bring in both categories of resources that means that you most likely will have employee resources here in my sample data um, case I inserted 10 workers so you have got worker 1 up to 10 so in your use case that will be most likely a few more workers that operate on your shop floor and that you need to schedule and additionally to just bring in these resources here in column A what you do is you bring in the contractual work shifts so the normal working times that these guys work for you here I made an easy example I said every worker is working in the same shift it's just a one shift business here it starts at 7 in the morning um, at half past 12 there's half an hour break and then these guys work until half past 3 in the afternoon and this is true for one day to Friday while the weekend is off okay that's pretty intuitive isn't it so next is additionally to your employees so to your manpower capacity you need to bring in your machine resources and here in my case I have got two saws I've got like three surface treatment resources two CNC's and two edge banding machines and of course you also need to bring in the availability of these machines but as in my case here I will schedule always one person together with one machine what you can do then is you bring in a 24 7 work shift as like the machines don't go home as a matter of fact but they are available always but they cannot run or be set up independently you always need minimum for set up a employee resource first so that's all about the very first step to define your resources the second step to, to finalize the resource setup is that you pitch up a what we call skill matrix let's first have a look into the category of the employees so here what I do then to pitch up this matrix I define which kind of skills you have within your shop so here what skill you have we have got the skill to operate the saw therefore I insert this skill into this column additionally I need to have the skill to operate the surface treatment then same thing with the CNC and also with the edge bender so I've got these categories that refer to skills of operating the machines and additionally I've got another skill that I need people for packaging but this packaging is, is just a manual process and you won't need any machine resource for that 
And what I do then is I assign the skills worker by worker accordingly. So here you can see that my worker number one has a skill to do the saw or um, alternatively he could also be taken to operate the surface treatment or the CNC. Same skill set with worker two. Then we are coming to worker three. Worker three has a skill to do the surface treatment or packaging and so on. And with that what you have is a skill matrix of your skills of your operator team. Okay, then this is done also for your machines and the machines are grouped in different groups. So you would not put e.g. the saw into the operator class as a matter of fact. So what you do is you bundle those resources into one group that can be taken alternatively. So if you have a sawing operation that would mean that you would need one of both saws, so either saw one or saw two, and you would need one of the people that have the skill to operate one of the saw. So therefore we bundle the saws into a group that we call saw machines or saws. So here then we bundle the surface treatments into the surface treatment machines, the CNCs and the edge vendors. And this is it. Nothing more to be done to define your resources for scheduling. So then next what you do is, and by the way this as a matter of fact these resources are master data so this is like an initial setup you would not need to do that um, when ongoing using the planning board. So if this is an initial setup and afterwards you would just add additional jobs with additional operations. And to add the jobs and to add the initial backlog that you have currently, it definitely makes sense to predefine recurring routing structures. So even though you guys might be very very highly customized and um, don't have too many um, like standard products, but by experience you also have got some recurring routings or maybe also your shop is divided into two sections. One which is just like 100% customized jobs and the other is those recurring jobs. And to predefine the recurring routing structures, first what you do is what we say, what we call defining job templates. So here you fully define an entire routing of a potential job which is recurring. So let's see how that job routing number one here is defined. First of all, every line here as a matter of fact is one operation. And this line gets a task number you can give it also a name and here you can see that I have got a sawing, surface treatment, CNC, edge bending and finally the packaging. And to bring in a routing structure to those operations what you do is you refer to the predecessor's task number. So here you can see the surface treatment has a predecessor's task number 10 which means that the surface treatment starts after the sawing is finished. Okay, so now what we then need to do is we need to define which resource group or which resource groups in plural are needed for each task. So let's start off with a sawing. So like here as I made the example before what I need is two groups. I need one of the saws plus at the same time there must be also one of the operators available that has a skill to operate the saw. The same is true for the surface treatment. You need one of the machines and you need a person. Same thing with CNC, edge bending also and the packaging is just manual and you just here in my case you just need one person for the packaging. Then what you do is you are you need to define the duration of the operation and this is related to the amount of units that you produce in a job. So what you bring in is a production time per every unit. So here like one unit of sawing needs one 
and a half a minute. The surface treatment needs two minutes and always don't forget it needs two minutes per unit and you need to have both simultaneously. So here in CNC I inserted also a setup time which is absolute so it's not relating to the amount of units so every time you will set up the CNC you would need 20 minutes. And this is how the drop routing one is predefined. So let's have a quick look into the drop routing number two. It's, it's structured pretty similar. The basic difference is here in the CNC setup. Um, here you can see that I inserted now two lines for the CNC and I differentiated for of the setup and the process operation itself, which means for the setup you need the machine and a person and afterwards the CNC after setup will run independently, also possible. And in that way what you do is you predefine as many routings that you have doing or running your job shop. So the higher your degree of customization, I guess, um, the shorter will be the list. But by experience, and I'm working with, uh, I have been working with really several customers, and there the lesson is that having a closer look into the business, you're always able to predefine a lot of recurring structures. And in that regard, if you might not be able to predefine an entire job, what you also could do is you can just predefine the parts of the job, what we call component. So here we have got also sub-processes which we call components that then can be defined in the total same manner and these components can also be used to define. So here in my job routing 4 I just refer to I'm doing one component 1, another component 2 and afterwards both end in packaging. Does that make sense? Okay, so either predefined components and based on the components you can also then make a step into entire job templates but define as many predefinable routings as you can. Okay, and then the very last step of creating your initial order backlog is that you need to list down which jobs you have in your backlog currently and that one to that you want to schedule. So here I inserted like 100 POs. It always depends a bit on the kind of business that you're operating. Some of our customers have way more jobs, others have less. It just depends a bit on the average duration of one of your operations. So what you do is you bring in your job name, which is unique. Normally our customers take what they have within their ERP system. What you can do then is define a release date which is the earliest possible starting date of that job. So um, the job would not be scheduled before that what you insert here automatically. Then we have a due date um, creating the initial order backlog. Normally the due date comes along as you have um, this agreement with your customer already, but using the planning board ongoing, then the due date is more or less the outcome of the scheduling process and would be added afterwards, so as a result of scheduling. So then what we have is a job quantity, so that's the amount of units, so if you're just really highly customized and um, go down into a batch size of one, then this will always remain a one. Here in my example I assume that I have got recurring job routings and therefore I have got units and I referred to the templates that I have created. Additionally you, would, you are always able to define any individual routings following the same method and not referring to a job template. So if something is really unique, so let's make that example that the PO number 100 is really unique then you could add these PO 100 in the same way and totally customized. Okay, but this 
is it. So this is all you need to do in a first step to define your resources, to, to define your master data of recurring routing structures and to define your order backlog. And this then can be directly brought into the planning board and is scheduled automatically. So now let's do that and now what I can do is directly selecting this file here. I'm uploading and then what you see is here in that what we call the job view all 100 POs that I have defined in the Excel sheet and are uploaded, so all 100, and they are all fully scheduled in terms of when they are started and when they are currently scheduled to be finished, and to get a better impression of how the scheduling was automatically done in terms of which resource was assigned to each operation we quickly switch to what we call the resource view. Here you can see on the left hand side um, the resources that we defined and if I am selecting one PO so then you can also directly see which resource was assigned to which operation. But I will show this to you in the upcoming video. So, so I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.